loss. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. An historic trial that began Tuesday in Argentina is set to reveal new details about how six Latin American countries coordinated with each other in the 1970s and 1980s to eliminate political dissidents. The campaign, known as Operation Condor, involved military dictatorships in Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, Peru and Uruguay. They worked together to track down and kidnap and kill people they labeled as terrorists, leftists, activists, labor organizers, students, priests, journalists, guerrilla fighters and their families. The campaign was launched by Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet, and evidence shows the CIA and former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger were complicit from its outset. At least 25 military generals are facing charges, and more than 500 witnesses are expected to testify during the trial. Last August, an Argentine federal judge issued a formal request to the Obama administration's Justice Department to make Kissinger himself available for questioning. The Obama administration did not respond. The trial is taking place in Buenos Aires, the site of a former auto mechanic shop turned torture camp. Argentina is where the greatest number of killings of foreigners was carried out under Operation Condor. All of this comes just weeks after Uruguay's Supreme Court struck down a law that had allowed similar prosecutions in that country. Well, for more, we're joined by John Dingus, author of The Condor Years, How Pinochet and His Allies Brought Terrorism to Three Continents. The book brings together interviews and declassified intelligence records to reconstruct the once secret events. Before that, Dingus was with NPR and worked as a freelance reporter in Latin America. He is currently a professor at the Columbia School of Journalism. John Dingus, welcome yeah, to Democracy nice Now! To be here. Thanks. Talk about the significance of this trial that's now underway in Argentina. Well, there have been several trials, and, and this goes back to when Pinochet was arrested in London in 1998. That unleashed an avalanche of evidence that went across Europe uh, and led to trials in many places uh, Rome, Paris. Uh, Argentina, Chile, but all of them much smaller than this one. This one has 25 people accused. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, who knows, uh, many of the people who were involved in this have already died. Uh, they're getting old of the top leaders. But this is 25 Argentinians and one Uruguayan, all of whom were in military positions, all of whom were involved directly with the uh, actions of Operation Condor. This is historic in the sense that uh, we're going to hear from 500 witnesses. And, for, and really, in the Latin American legal system, it's unusual. It's really only coming to the fore now that you hear witnesses, as opposed to just seeing them uh, give their testimony to judges in a closed room. And then later on, people like me might go and read those testimonies, but uh, really it doesn't become public. This is all public, and, uh, and, I, and apparently a lot of it is being videotaped. So this is, this is the first time that the general public is going to hear the details of, uh, of, the, of, of this horrible, horrible uh, uh, list of atrocities that killed so many people. And, and John, for uh, folks who have uh, never heard of Operation Condor, know little about it, the uh, the origins of it, how it began, and uh, uh, the nations or the governments that spearheaded it. Could you talk about that? Well, it is a Chilean invention. Augusto Pinochet uh, had dominated his opposition. Uh, by the coup was in 1973. By 1974, there was no internal opposition to speak of. But many of the people who uh, had been part of the previous government that he had overthrown had gone overseas. There was a, a very major, uh, important general who was living in Argentina. Uh, political leaders, for example, Orlando Letelier, the former uh, foreign minister and former ambassador of the United States. Uh, somebody who would have lunch with Henry Kissinger was living in Washington. Uh, people were spread around uh, in Europe uh, and all over Latin America, and Pinochet wanted to go after them. And so he mounted Operation Condor, and he convinced the other countries, uh, Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Bolivia, um, and Paraguay, to go along with him with the argument that there are these guerrilla operations uh, that are a threat to all of them. And there was indeed a guerrilla operation called the... Uh, uh, revolutionary coordinating junta of people who were taking up arms against these governments. Uh, and the idea was that they would cooperate in tracking these people down, and they did. Most of the, uh, the biggest part 
of the exiles were in Argentina, because Argentina was the last country to give up its civilian government. It wasn't a dictatorship until March of 1976, and this was created in late 1975. Uh, so they were all geared up, uh, and when the coup happened in, in Argentina, uh, they began killing hundreds of people of these foreigners. And it's interesting the, that they, you mentioned the, the uh, Automotores Orleti. This is an auto repair shop that was used as a torture center, and that's where they kept the international prisoners. We, Democracy Now! went there, visited this shop. Um, I want to read from a declassified record of a CIA briefing that shows that American officials were aware that Latin intelligence services were casting their net wide in Operation Condor. It says, quote, they're joining forces to eradicate subversion, a word which increasingly translates into nonviolent dissent from the left and center left. Um, it goes on um, uh, to another document that you obtained. John Dingus. Um, that's from the Chilean secret police, known as the DINA. It details the number of dead and disappeared compiled by Argentine intelligence. The cable sent by DINA's attaché to Buenos Aires says he's, quote, sending a list of all the dead, which included the official and unofficial death toll. Between 75 and mid-78, he reported, quote, they count 22,000 between the dead and the disappeared. Talk about the number of the dead and what the U.S. knew. Well, let's do the U.S. first. Uh, the United States in this period, the 1970s, was a major sponsor of the military dictatorships that had overthrown uh, some democracies, some faltering civilian governments. Uh, whatever it was, the result was governments like Videla, like Pinochet, like Banser in Bolivia, who were killing their citizens with impunity. Uh, the United States knew about the uh, uh, about the mass killing. Uh, we had this kind of um, schizophrenic, Machiavellian attitude toward it. Uh, we we really don't want these communists to be taking over governments, and we fear that democracy is leading to communist governments. Indeed, uh, a leftist government led by Salvador Allende uh, installed a democratically elected civilian and revolutionary government in Chile, and that's why Pin and Pinochet overthrew that government. The United States was deathly fearful that this would spread in Latin America, and so supported the coming of dictatorships. When they began mass killings, the United States was aware of these mass killings. Uh, when they, uh, they learned of Condor shortly after it was created, there's no evidence that they knew about it the day it was created. Uh, the, the earliest evidence is a couple months after it began its operations. Uh, but they certainly knew these things were happening. And if you look at the, the meetings, the transcripts of the meetings between Henry Kissinger and these leaders, both in Argentina and in uh, Chile, where we have the records. What do they say in private? You know, we support what you are doing. We understand that you have to assert your authority. Uh, try your best to release some prisoners, because I'm under a lot of pressure in Congress, because the, the Democrats are trying to make me, uh, you know, defend human rights. Do the best you can, but I understand what you're doing. And in, in one, one case, uh, two weeks after Kissinger visited Santiago, uh, there was a the second major meeting of all the Condor countries to discuss Condor. And at that meeting in June 1976, they approved operations for assassination outside of Latin America. The first assassination that occurred was in Washington, D.C. Orlando Letelier, the former foreign minister, was killed uh, on the streets of Washington. This is an astounding mm -hmm. story. You wrote uh, a book about it, in fact. And this is, I've written actually two books, one about the assassination, in which I, for the first time, in, uh, wrote a chapter on the discovery of Operation Condor. I didn't have a lot of detail. In fact, I was misled by the State Department to a certain extent. Um, and, uh, and then, years later, after Pinochet was arrested in London, uh, a flood of documents, including uh, many, many 60,000 pages of documents released by, uh, ordered released by President Clinton, 
uh, I was able to then, you know, really dig in and understand this from the point of view of the United States. But also, many, many documents were revealed in Latin America. And that is, I, I think, even more important, because if it, we just had U.S. documents, it's always subject to, well, that's the U.S. view of these things. What was really going on in those Latin American governments? But explain how, Ron, how uh, Orlando Letelier and his assistant, Ronnie Moffat, were killed in the streets of Washington, D.C., in the United States in 1976. Uh, Pinochet uh, began this operation shortly after that meeting with Kissinger. With, within a month, he gave the order approving this. They sent a, uh, an agent who had been working for Dina for uh, several years named Michael Townley, an American. I don't believe it was any accident that they, that they made an American working for them the hitman on this, because obviously as soon as uh, suspicion was cast on them, they said, oh, this guy was working for the CIA. And, and a lot of people like to believe that the CIA does all these things, and in fact, both the extreme right and the extreme left were saying, oh, it was the CIA who did it. There's no evidence that Townley was working for the CIA, but he certainly was working for the Chileans. He allied with some Cubans up in New Jersey, uh, anti-Castro Cubans. They came down to Washington. Uh, they Townley crawled under the car, installed a bomb that he had constructed himself. It's run by one of those old beeper devices. They followed the car down Massachusetts Avenue, and at Sheridan Circle, right outside uh, near the Chilean embassy, they pushed the button, killed him. Ronnie Moffat was the wife of Michael Moffat, who was actually Orlando's assistant. Uh, she was sitting in the front seat, and that's why she was killed. Michael survived, and Orlando, of course, was devastated, died immediately. The, uh and Townley uh, went to jail for a few years, and Townley, then— Townley, the Chileans turned him over. When, when the, the story of how we solved this case is incredible. The presumption was that the United States is not going to investigate this very strongly. Everybody that thought that was wrong, the FBI did, made an enormous investigation, solved the case got pictures of the people, and that's the long story that I tell in the, in the, in the book. Uh, when they identified the people that had come up to the United States to, to carry this out, they went down to Chile, asked for the cooperation of the Pinochet government, and Pinochet eventually, they had two choices. They, either they were going to kill Townley, and there's evidence that that was one of their plans, or they had to turn him over, and they eventually turned him over. He was taken to the United States. And he began to give testimony, and another flood of information uh, came from Michael Townley. Townley still lives in the United States. He served only five years in prison. Uh, and then went into witness protection. And was in witness protection for a while. I, I understand he's not anymore in witness protection. He lives in the Midwest. Um, and uh, he's, uh, he has cooperated. Uh, I don't know whether he, there's any remorse in his part, but he has cooperated with many investigations since his imprisonment. John, I'd like to ask you about a, 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 a unusual figure that you uh, talk about in the book and his role in trying to end uh, Operation Condor. Ed Koch, the, the uh, uh, recently deceased mayor of New York, who was then a young liberal congressman and who began asking all kinds of questions about what was going on and angered uh, our own government. Could you talk about that? He, uh, Ed Koch, uh, a beloved figure in, in, in this city, and, and certainly uh, everybody that's dealt with him has had the same experience. And I was reporting this story. Uh, he was very cooperative with me, and he came to my book party, so I love him, too. Uh, Ed Koch was a congressman. He spearheaded a bill, an amendment to a bill, to cut off military aid to Uruguay. The Uruguayans were members—this was 1976. The Uruguayans were members of Operation Condor, and the CIA discovered—and and I think the evidence is that they discovered, because they were—they talked about it in front of them, that they said they were going to get the Chileans to go up to Washington to kill Koch. And whether that actually was put into action, uh, we don't know. Uh, but George Bush, who was head of the CIA at the time, called up Ed Koch and said, uh, Ed, uh, 
and, and it's wonderful to hear Koch tell this story. Uh, I've got to tell you something. There's a, there's a plot to kill you. And, and Ed Koch said, uh, are you going to provide me attention? They said, no, 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 that's not our job. We're the CIA. We're just telling you, and it's up to you to provide your own uh, protection. Ed Koch didn't know this was Operation Condor. He just thought this was some crazy people from the dictatorship. Later on, in, in my investigation, I, was, I, was, I actually talked to one of the people who was involved in this, and the, one of the Uruguayans, and um, uh, who, it, it was a condor operation. Uh, it was kind of a typical one, even though it, it didn't actually kill anybody, uh, luckily. Uh, but it was the, the modus operandi. Uh, in order to cover their tracks, one country would use another country's nationals to, to do their dirty work uh, in the operations that were planned outside of Latin America. Inside of Latin America, you had uh, a much more uh, systematic and, and effective way of operating in which they would just track down each other's dissidents in whatever country they happened to be, Peru, uh, Bra uh, Brazil, Uruguay, uh, mainly in Argentina. Uh, and then they would—the methodology was simple. Capture them, kidnap them, torture them, kill them, make their bodies disappear. Uh, very few victims have survived Operation Condor, almost none. It's very difficult to find a survivor. And yet, uh, today in Latin America, many of the leaders of the new populist governments were folks who had emerged from the, some of the very groups uh, that Condor was tracking. In Uruguay, it's especially a former Tupamaro, and, uh, and throughout the region, uh, those dissidents now are part of the, the governing apparatus of the country. I countries. was in Bolivia just two weeks ago. And uh, I, I interviewed one of the uh, one of the people in the Ministry of Communications, and uh, a man who's uh, 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 among the many, many, many indigenous people who were in the Morales government. And he described how his uh, father had been a prison had been in Chile as an exile. When the military coup happened, he was imprisoned and kept prisoner for seven months and tortured. Uh, and I talked to, in that same office, another person who also had been involved in, a, in the Bolivian resistance uh, in the 1980s, uh, going back with the group that had fought together with Che Guevara in the 1960s. His father had been involved with them. Uh, uh, these are revolutionaries, but they are a different brand of revolutionaries. They are as dedicated, I think, uh, but they're not taking up arms. I, I, I really believe that they realize that that did not lead to successful revolutions, and so I'm much more optimistic about what's going on with the with this current group of governments. Finally, uh, State Department cable 1978 uh, begins the jacket of your book, says Kissinger explained his opinion the government of Argentina had done an outstanding job in wiping out terrorist forces. The significance of uh, the judge calling for uh, Kissinger's testimony and the Obama administration not responding. They have asked for Kissinger to, to give testimony many times, and in, in my book I, uh, I quote the one time where he actually responded to a petition from France, I believe it was, and he basically denied everything. This is very frustrating. I, w I was able to uh, it was clear to me that the, the, uh, there's no other word for it. These were lies. I mean, the documents say one thing, Kissinger said another thing, and he knew what those documents said. Uh, it's not, uh, the United States has never allowed uh, any of its officials to face trial in other countries. We didn't, are not a member of the ICC. Uh, there's the never international criminal the International court. Criminal Court. There's never been any uh, participate, there's never been any. Uh, uh, Trials that that have that have brought Americans in the dock. There was an, uh, an attempt in Italy. Of course, all of those people were gone. Uh, the United States, for one reason or another, uh, Democrats and Republicans protect our own human rights criminals when it's involving human rights crimes outside of the United States. I, uh, it's just the way it Would is. You describe Henry Kissinger in that way as a human uh, rights criminal. Yes, absolutely.
I don't. And, and, the, and the relevance of this history of uh, farming out uh, uh, the battle against terrorism, and, and so you could have no uh, no finger marks, uh, no fingerprints of your own involvement to the current war against terrorism in the United States. Well, I, I wrote, I was writing chapter one when 9/11 happened uh, in my house in Washington, and. I, as I finished the book, and I actually end with a reference to 9-11, I said this is not something that we're condemned to repeat. And I was making the comparison between uh, the war on terror in the 1970s and the current war on terror that was launched by President Bush. I, I thought we were going to, we had learned the lesson that you don't imitate the methods of your enemies. Uh, and um, or, or those who had been shown to be human rights criminals. Uh, un unfortunately, we, we crossed that line, I think, many times. The current discussion about drones, I think, is, is very frightening, uh, because I'm having a hard time distinguishing between what they did with Operation Condor, low-tech, and what a drone does, because a drone is basically going into somebody else's country, even with the permission of that country. Of course, that's what Operation Condor did in most cases. You track somebody down, and you kill them. Now, the justification is, well, they were a criminal, they were a combatant. Uh, well, that may or may not be true, but nobody is determining that except the person that's pulling the trigger. I just think that, that uh, this has to be uh, something that we discuss, and maybe trials like this going back to the 70s, people said, well, that was the dictatorships of the 1970s. But the, 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 the tendency of a state to feel that they can uh, move against their enemies in the most effective way possible. Uh, is still there, and it is certainly not limited to dictatorships. We want to thank you, John Dingus, for being with us. John Dingus is author of The Condor Years, How Pinochet and His Allies Brought Terrorism to Three Continents. Uh, before that, he was with National Public Radio, NPR, worked as a freelance reporter in Latin America, is currently a professor at the Columbia School of Journalism. This is Democracy. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.